Hi, thanks for tuning in. This video is part of the Setting Up Your Wireless Network video series for EC Cloud. In this video, we're going to talk about what is network behavior for your wireless networks, what are the options, and how to configure settings for these different options. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. We will be configuring settings at the site level instead of at the device level. So here we are at a site called demo site. Click on configuration, Wi-Fi access, and we'll use this as society. So we'll go to the configuration page. If you scroll down, then under network settings, you'll find the network behavior setting. So there are five options, bridge to internet, route to internet, add to guest network, hotspot controlled, and VLAN TAC traffic. You can click on the question mark here, and here's a link to go to a support article that will explain each of these options in detail. Basically, the network behavior setting tells the AP how you want to treat this interface. In this video, we will explain a bit about these options and go through the configuration. First option, bridge to internet. In this mode, the wireless interface is bridged with the internet source so that any upstream devices or interfaces will be able to communicate with the clients behind this AP. And the internet source is typically the first WAN port or ETH0 for a wire connection, or it can be a radio operating in client WDS mode for a wireless connection. To show you where to find internet settings, let's go to general networking. And under internet and general settings, you see that the internet source has been set to WAN port and we cannot configure it. Because here you're only able to configure the IP address mode. And to configure the rest of the settings, you will have to access the AP directly. So this is the first option. Now let's go back to see our second option, which is route to internet. So you can think of this option as the system performing NAT on the wireless clients connected on this SSID. This option involves configuring the local network setting. So let's check it out. So click on local networks, and the first section is default local network. So this is the network that your wireless clients will be on once they connect to this SSID. And DHCP server is enabled by default, so that clients will be assigned an IP address by DHCP once they're connected. So you may want to use this option if you don't have an upstream DHCP server. Here you can also see smart isolation setting. We have linked an article on smart isolation in the description below. So if you're interested, do check it out. Here you can also add custom LANs. So we can add one here. So you'll see that the LAN that we have just added now shows up at the bottom here. So if we go back to the SSID configuration page, we now have the option to choose the custom LAN that we have just created. That's the second option, which is route to internet. Now the third option is add to guest network. To configure guest network, we will go to local networks again, and we'll scroll down to find the guest network section here. You can see that the settings here are basically the same as the default local network. However, the subnets are different, and also the default setting for smart isolation are different. 
And as the name suggests, clients connected on the guest network should not have access to the LAN. So by default, they will have internet access only. Okay, now let's go back to see the fourth option, which is hotspot control. You see a warning here that says hotspot is not able. So let's go to the hotspot settings page and we can enable it here. You can see many options here. So you can click on what's this to reveal a detailed description of each option. And then you can decide which one works best for you. We will be covering hotspot service settings in more detail in another video later in the series, where we will explain how to set up Captive Portal for user authentication. For now, without going into the details, if you just want something quick and simple and you don't want to set up a web server to host the splash page, and also you don't have an external radius server for user authentication, then you can just choose no authentication or simple password only splash page. Then you, you can see that the setting for smart isolation is the same as that for guest network, which is internet access only. Let's scroll down. So network settings, DHCP server, captive portal, auth exceptions can all be configured here. One thing that's worth mentioning is that these settings may change depending on which hotspot mode is selected. So if we choose external captive portal service, you can see that there is a section here for you to configure the radius server. But if we choose no authentication, then we don't have that section anymore because you won't have to configure any radius server. So this is your fourth option, which is uh, hotspot control. Now let's go back to check the last option, which is VLAN tag traffic. So you can see that we have not added any VLANs. So let's click on configure VLANs. So this will bring us to the last section on this page, the general networking page. Here we'll be able to add new VLANs. So you can see tag ports. And if you click on the question mark, it says tag ingress and egress traffic is forwarded to specific ports. And then on tag interfaces, it says VLAN tag is removed from outgoing traffic and on tag incoming traffic is tagged with VLAN ID. To help you better understand how to configure VLAN settings here, let's click on add new VLAN first. So you need to add a VLAN ID and choose which port you want tagged. And depending on which port or ports are selected as tagged, there are three scenarios here. So let me pull up some slides to help explain these scenarios. This is the first scenario. A VLAN ID of 100 has been added, and only the WAN port is tagged. So if a client connects to an SSID that is tagged with VLAN 100, then their traffic will be restricted to go through the WAN port but not the LAN port. This effectively blocks wireless clients from accessing whatever is connected on the LAN port. Now consider the second scenario. A VLAN ID of 200 has been added, and only the LAN port is tagged. In this scenario, if a client connects to an SSID tagged with VLAN 200, then their traffic will be restricted to go through the LAN port, but not the WAN port. Now wireless clients are blocked from accessing the internet or the upstream network. Now consider the third scenario. A VLAN ID of 300 has been added, and both WAN and LAN ports are tagged. In this scenario, if a client connects to an SSID tagged with VLAN 300, 
then there's no restriction on where the traffic can go. They can go through um, both WEN and LAN ports. Now let's go back to the cloud and show you how to do the configuration. So let's start again. Go to general networking and scroll down to find VLAN. Click on add new VLAN. We'll add a VLAN of 500 and we'll select WAN port as the tag port. Click confirm. So you can click on configure SSIDs or you can go to the wireless SSID tab. So click on here. Now let's add an SSID called VLAN 500 and select VLAN tag traffic as the network behavior. Then since we've just added a VLAN of 500, we're able to see it in the drop-down menu here. So let's select that, confirm. So now if we go back to the VLAN section, you can see that the wireless SSIDs now show up under on tag interfaces. So now we have gone through all five options for network behavior. Let's do a quick recap. So network behavior setting is found in SSID configuration. It tells the device how you want to treat this interface. And there are five options, bridge to internet, route to internet, add to guest network, hotspot control, and VLAN tag traffic. So that's all to this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to ecwifi at edge-core.com. We will be happy to answer your questions. See you soon in the next video.